C10 Talk, episode 149. Interviews from the intervention, the C10 intervention. Now we're just having a blast traveling around with it and uh, meeting people and going places. You know, social media and, and C10s and everything, like it's amazing the people you meet, like literally all over the world. It's unbelievable. Damn, son. Welcome to C10 Talk, your C10 truck podcast. Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. All right, all right, all right. C10 Nation. Damn, son, it's been a minute. Haven't put out any pod lately, and uh, I've been slacking. I really have been slacking. I've been running, I've been gunning, we've been moving, we've been shaking. So, uh, intervention, C-10's in the park, seven states, 4,800 miles, big truck ran good, orange slice ran good, and uh, not one breakdown, not one issue. So, that's uh, remarkable, and uh, that's the difference, you know, driving Yellowstone, mm, Three times to Texas, I think three times to Cali, up to Las Vegas for LS Fest once, plus all over the state of Arizona, you're going to get some issues, especially when you go effing around with crap and just not leaving shit alone. So, Orange Slice, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. The truck turned out unbelievable. The response and, uh, you know, thumbs up and so on and so forth has been absolutely remarkable and uh i just want to uh tell you a little bit about the journey i don't want to get too long-winded because we got a lot to get caught up on i haven't talked to you for a while i meant to get the show out between shows before i went out to texas just not gonna happen i had one day and and uh just couldn't make it happen so matador travis az pro johnny g kyle and big 10 bowman mvps I would not and could not have gotten the truck done if it wasn't for those guys. Matador, honestly, was take, took it home. I mean, he was here. I needed him a couple times. I had to call it in, and uh, we pushed it to the absolute wire. <clears throat> Bowman, we didn't even get done till 4.30 that morning. And uh, funny story, I'm supposed to leave to go pick up my buddy in Salt Lake, G Breezy, fresh and easy, sometimes sleazy. But uh, I'm like, dude. He's like, I'm already in Salt Lake. And I'm like, I'm in Phoenix. I'm I'm here. And he's like, you can tell he's frustrated. He doesn't get frustrated uh, really at all. So I'm like, dude, jump on a plane to Vegas and we'll pick you up in Vegas. So I should have initially said we'll pick you up in Vegas, but we pushed it to the wire. So um, those five guys are the MVPs of this, you know, to help me and, and to get me to where I needed to be to get this truck done on the day that I needed it to be done. And uh, there wasn't a lot of sleeping going on. It was somewhat of a SEMA style crunch. So again, Matador, Travis, Johnny G, Kyle, Metalox, and then uh, Big Ten Bowman. Thank you guys so much. Truck Luck, um, his daughter, Squits, Goose, my boy Payson. Sometimes he wanted to help, sometimes not so much. My wife, my amazing wife, she could tell I was under the gun. So Automoto, thank you so much. Sammy Sells, always there when you need him. Sam Castronova, thank you so much. And then both Solomon and Grinder, Brian Good, who are more media guys, you know, at times I was like, dude, you know, pick this up or hand me this because um, just a lot going on. <clears throat> Brian Grinder did a video of our first phase of the trip, including some of the uh, stuff here at the shop. So please check that out. It's the under Grinder TV and it's C10 Intervention, the road too. So he did a great job. Travis and Matador came over. Uh, we did some breaks. We did the Revelator kit. And so Grinder was here during that time. And you could tell that was, mm, I think that was Thursday night prior. So about a week prior to us heading down the road or up the road. So let's see here. Uh, I just want to thank each one of those guys. Um, and, uh, and then obviously all the people and the companies behind. I'll make this one quick. Ride Tech, US Mags, Metalox. Those three, obviously Kyle for shortening the truck, Ride Tech for putting the truck where it needed to be, the stance, and then the US Mags. I mean, when I look at the truck, when I approach the truck, when I see the truck, 
it's really those three things. And then and then I'd have to throw out Rome the Polisher. This was a guy that Sam Castronova used on C minus. That's where I first met him and was introduced to him. Called him up. He comes out. He has like this little tool. He's like measuring the paint. He's like, there's really pretty good paint on this truck, which is pretty crazy for a 43 year old truck especially the way that that truck design is the way the color is and you know the different paint schemes and the stickers and so on and so forth he comes out he measures it he's like hey i'll come out you know this day well he comes out i think it was a tuesday and i was at work and my wife's like he's still here he's still here he's still here he put in a solid eight hours and he he's like i'm having fun i'm texting him all what do you need he's like i'm just having a blast man and uh when i got home that wednesday excuse me that Wednesday I was blown away when I opened the garage I mean he brought that paint back to a whole nother level and when you look at the truck again you see the stance you see the wheels and you see that paint and you're like holy shit I mean literally damn son Rome you did an amazing job I, I doubt he listens to pod but the dude just killed it Rome the polisher um, Toyo tires, obviously wrap those US mags and Toyos. Flowmasters, ooh. So when you start the truck, 454, nothing really majorly done to it. I'd love to put a cam in there. Big 10 Bowman threw them on, Series 40s. So we're running duels where it, it sounds so good. And the and the big block and the Flowmasters and the old school 40 series. And that's what I was going for. I was going for 1976 to 1981 and maybe two. And I'm looking for a rake. I'm looking for a stance. I'm looking for a sound. And, and I think I nailed it. It, it, it turned out really good. And, I, and I'm stoked. I love the truck. I love turning the key and just listen to that thing. And even when you kind of come off of the throttle, that exhaust still has that rumble and almost like a little bit of a Jake break. And it, it just sounds really crisp and it sounds clean. And uh, it's so much fun to drive. That Ride Tech handles like unbelievable. So... Uh, let's see here. Flowmasters, Marque, obviously, when you see that brand new trim off of that paint that Rome polished, you see the brand new made in Oklahoma, USA, bam, new trim, kills it. So it's really the whole the whole formula. Brothers Trucks, I needed tons of parts. I needed little things. I needed fuel tanks. I needed a, a front bumper. I needed a carpet kit. So many little things, uh, some of those little odds and ends, even to the things, for example, like your... Uh, lock unlock you know the little things that the little black plastic pieces that break hit them up brothers brothers trucks wham rods those are killer gets rid of that stock uh hood spring dakota digital rtx those things look amazing they perform amazing and it gives it that old school style you know analog look with that that uh you know that digital tech so uh, I love the digital, uh, the Dakota Digital RTX, United Pacific, getting those lights to pop. PRP, Precision Replacement Parts. I need to continue to, to install some of their stuff, some of the belt moldings. LS Fab, LS Fab's out of Canada. They kicked it out and they said, hey, you want to run these uh, rock protectors? And I'm like, well, I have the OGs. And so I go, send me a set and I'll look at them. So I send, they send me them out and I'm like, it's a no brainer. With the Marque popping and the US mags and the bumpers and the shine and the balance. So we got those and they are a perfect match. They nailed it from the OGs that I have sitting there. I still have them. So I got to sit there and compare them. Uh, Rome the polisher again, D bomb nailing out the interior. I had the SMS 1976 fabric sent out, the fabric that was new to those trucks back in '76 that matches Orange Slice. And D bomb did what he does, and he did an amazing job on that seat. Slosh tubs, I'm running their mild tubs in there. I'm actually only running one because I didn't get the second one in. And then I saw Mike in Texas, and he's like, uh, You're gonna have to change a few things to get this one to fit. So I will get that done before Dino's. And then again, back to Matador. Matador helped me. Uh, that that's Caesar Matador Customs. He did such a great job helping me put the trim on and uh, right up to the last minute. So those guys all helped me. Uh, we got a top 20 at the show at the intervention. And uh, I was not expecting that, especially from a vendor. But uh, that was cool. So uh, thank you guys all for the hospitality from the intervention. Carlos, Tony, John, and the Provost team. They did an amazing job. And again, you can check out that grinder video and you can see uh, just everything that went on. Now, the C10 Compadres, these guys, we took over the parking lot on Saturday night. This is a Sunday show. I don't know if they'll change that in the future. 
and I don't know that I've really asked them why they do a Sunday show versus a Saturday show, but um, we'll look at that and we'll we'll talk that talk to them about that. The C10 Compadres. We took over the hotel. The hotel was super cool because essentially we probably owned every room in the thing and, and they really couldn't say much and they really didn't say much. But the hotel parking lot was old school party. You know, I could see it like 90s mini truck, um, 90s OBS style, big time show. The parking lot was just a, a blast. It was an absolute blast. And uh, it, nothing got out of hand. You know, the, the the drinks were flowing. But the compadres, I mean, they literally like started roasting chilies in the in the early part of the day. They made fresh salsa. They made uh, carne asada tacos. And it was all there. And they were feeding everybody. So my hat, uh, essentially my underwear, whatever, it's all off because of the comp- compadres. They did a great job, dude. Uh, I think Big Fish said it. He's like, it's like a freaking old school kager. And it was. It was phenomenal. So C10 Compadres, thank you for the hospitality. C10 Intervention, you guys did a great job. Thank you so much. And you'll hear that they're going to look to uh, get a bigger place for 2020 because they've already outgrown in their second show. So the third annual C10 Intervention will probably be in Woodland. Mm, let's see here cruising through cruising through here some things i wanted to say um new swag obviously we had a bunch of new swag at both shows sweatshirts are out c10 nation we have a c10 nation okra long sleeve shirt for you guys pretty sweet shirt kind of that old school yellow yellow stone or if you like you know uh, okra or spanish gold uh, with the wood grain across it new hats we got some new patch hats flat curved we got some that leather style, it's technically not leather. It's like leather et or something like that. Those are out. Check it out, c10nation.com. There's a few coffee mugs. You got to get them quick. I think we're almost out. We literally ordered three cases. We hit two shows, and I don't know if we'll have any to make it to Dino's because I want to put them out there so you guys that aren't making these three shows that you can get them. So if you're listening to this, you don't have a coffee mug and you want one, get it because they're going to be gone. And I, I'm not going to do them again. I'm going to do a different style. That that is the that is the plan. I'm not going to do that style again. That's this, this is the second round of them, and uh, we'll, we we got to come up with something fresh. So if you want one of these OG damn sons, hit it up now. Mm. Sponsors. Let's go to the sponsors. Who's paying for this thing? Well, essentially, I just hit a bunch of the the companies that that helped me with Orange Slice. This episode is brought to you by none other than Classic Perform, classicperform.com. That's CPP. Went over to the shop and picked up a bunch of parts while I was running around Cali after the intervention. They've got it. So they've got a new spindle coming out. We're going to talk to them about that. It's not quite out yet. You've got, uh, you know, obviously you've got your hydro boost. You've got all your levels of braking. People hit me up all the time. Hey, you know, entry level braking. CPP. You want 13s? You want 14s? CPP. They've got it. You want steering? They've got it. They've got upgraded. They've got rebuilt. They've got everything that you need from LS conversions to braking to handling to coil over. They've got a kit for you. They're working on a square body kit for the coil over. You think about the braking. You think about the handling. I can't wait to start throwing some of the stuff on my son's truck. Snowballs. Snowball LS, CPP, 10% off if you use C10 Talk. So if you want 10% off the end of your order, hit C10 Talk and you get 10% off. And that helps me. So do that. Classicperform.com, CPP, AZ Pro. AZ Pro Performance obviously also has brakes. They have Curry. They have brakes. They're Revelators. They have AccuAir, Dakota Digital. Essentially, when you're thinking about something that you're like, hey, I don't want that stock. I want to upgrade. So I want to upgrade um, my suspension. I want to upgrade my handling. I want to upgrade my brakes. I want to upgrade uh, my gauges, AccuAir. Uh, they have the Clayton, the machine works. Uh, different different things that they make from a machining perspective to handles and some of the, the nicer stuff. They do have the switch hood hinges that he sells. Travis also sell, sells those. They pretty much, the cool thing about those guys is Travis is running and gunning with us alongside of us to these shows. So he's at these shows. He's a builder. Nick's a builder. Little Ed's a builder. These guys are builders selling you stuff and answering your questions. Their customer service is uh, second to none. Hit them up. Tell them I sent you. Travis, Nick, Ed, AZ Pro. 
How about PSI? You're thinking about doing a conversion. You're thinking about going LS. You need to think about calling PSI. That's who you call. You call PSI. You tell them C10 Talk sent you. You get free shipping on any order over 250. You get a shirt. And uh, they're the specialists. They literally make the swap as easy as possible. So you've got a C10. You're thinking about upgrading the motor. You've got an OBS. You're thinking about upgrading that motor. Probably do those brakes because we know they suck. You got a tired motor. You got an old 5.7. You want to put an LS in it. No brainer. You love the truck. C10, OBS, doesn't matter. 60 to all the way to 98. You need an LS? Hit up PSI. Tell them I sent you. PSI Conversion dot com backslash c10 talk and uh it'll take you right to the page psi conversion dot com backslash c10 talk psi psi conversion dot com backslash c10 talk tell them i sent you dakota digital hell yeah i got the vhx's in yellowstone i got the rtx's in orange slice and I'm telling you, I mean, if you if you're like me and you like the knowledge, you like to look at your gauges. For me, both of those trucks are big blocks, so I really am watching my heat. Big blocks, at least mine, they like to run a little warm. So I'm always watching that, you know, and it's just so nice that you can have some of those modern conveniences. Yellowstone, we've got temp, we've got direction, uh, we've got a little bit of everything, you know, elevation for Christ's sakes. So they they make a little bit of everything. You need it, they got it. Dakota Digital, VHX, HDX, and RTX. VHX is pretty much, um, it's kind of like entry level, but boy, oh boy, it's not. I mean, you get the rad look and you get the performance of the Dakota Digital, but uh, you're just not getting the ability to have your phone hook up to an app and change the colors. That's the HDX. You're taking it to a whole nother level. And then the RTX is the retro styling with the HDX performance. So, VHX, HDX, RTX. Hit up Travis or Nick if they have any questions. DakotaDigital.com. That's it. That's who's sponsoring the show. Now let me come back to some of my notes because I got to hit all these. Dinos, Dinos, and more Dinos. November 15th, are you coming? I just talked to a buddy the other day. He said the hotel is sold out, but there's other hotels around because it's literally a modern day entertainment district. So there's hotels all around. It's where the Cardinals play. It's where the Coyotes play. There's no shortage of hotels. Well, within reason. I mean, depending on how far. Obviously, if you want to walk to the whole show and the restaurants, the host hotel is preferred. But Dino's is November 15th. I think Krista's got some stuff for me to let you guys in on. Uh, so once I get those, I'll, I'll give you guys a heads up. But right now, November 15th, Westgate. Thursday, Tray 5 is the pre-show. Friday is the actual get down. Saturday, Seth over at Switch Suspension is doing a cruise, a barbecue cruise, I believe. That's also a good day if you want to head over to Good Guys. And uh, we've got some cruises planned. Saturday will be a blast. Sunday, you can go home. You can head up to Good Guys. If you're local, plenty of options. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and if you want, Sunday. So come on out. Come on over. Come on down. Come on up, wherever you're at. And have a good time. November 15th. It's free. You come on in. I think they're thinking a thousand trucks. I think they're thinking. Say that fast. I think they're thinking a thousand trucks. Yes. I think they're thinking a thousand trucks. Dino's ninth annual Chevy only get down. If you got a Ford and you got it, it's powered by a 350, a 454, an LS. Leave the Ford at home and bring the motor. That's Dino's. That's his saying, not mine. All right. Mm, mm, mm. So we got some of this. Okay, what else do we got here? <laughs> Believe it or not, I think I hit most of it. Um, right before this episode, I dropped a little Make-A-Wish. So there's a kid named Cody. Please go back if you haven't and check it out. Just a little bonus episode. Cody has uh, had leukemia and cancer. He's beaten it twice. And uh, we're working on a little C10 for him. Once I drop the show and I've continued to do a little more due diligence, this truck has been in the works for well over a year. A GSI full suspension chassis. The truck is rad. The kid's got a great vision. He's got a great ideas. We just need to implement it. It's one of those things where 
the companies are looking to back it. It's a great idea. It's just a issue really of a project manager and then somebody doing a lot of the work and coordinating. So right now he's wanting some TMI. I reached out to them. I believe they're on board. Vintage Air, they are on board. Dakota Digital, they are on board. And he's working with brothers on a few other things and a few other companies that he has requested. I think United Pacific's going to give him some lights. So John Oral, the man, the myth, the legend, the John father, is uh, he's up there and they're close. So he's going to go lay eyes on the truck. I talked to the Make-A-Wish uh, rep or liaison and uh, we're getting the ball rolling. So Cody said the truck is, is running and moving. He's getting it painted soon, hopefully. I believe at a local dealership. And then from there, we need to get the TMI. We need to get the, uh, or whoever. I, I believe TMI is involved. I need to confirm that. I reached out to my contact today and uh, did not hear back. But uh, obviously by next week's episode, which will be C10s in the park, I'll know more. So check it out. C10 Cody, C10 Wish, C10 underscore Wish is his Instagram. And uh, you can kind of see what's going on there. I also plan on doing an interview with, Boris and a guy by the name of Gary, and I think they're kind of heading up this whole Saudi thing. Uh, if you haven't heard, uh, Saudi is going to be putting on kind of an auction the last week, close to the last week of November. A lot of guys I know are sending some trucks over. So some are sending one, some are sending five, some are sending 10. Big money, big money. So I'm going to reach out to those guys and, and get an update for everybody because I'm sure you've heard rumblings of the Saudi auction and uh, who better to uh, to interview than the guys putting it on. I'm thinking about trying to go. I think they're going to want some media over there. The only thing as of today, and I need to talk to Boris, is I don't think we get back until like probably late Thanksgiving day or possibly Friday. Mm, what's one thing to be gone a week? I look forward to it. I think it'd be fun, but I don't really want to miss Thanksgiving. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but when you have kids at home, you have a, you know, you're uh, essentially, you've got, you know, certain amount of years. And then when you work shift work, like the fire department, you already give up some of those events some of those fun holidays because you're at work it's fun at the station don't get me wrong they come to the station but it's not quite the same so we'll see uh, if i have to be gone on thanksgiving or not i know that's probably my wife's f close to favorite uh holiday so again we'll see saudi arabia auction going on the end of november after sema after the get down we'll keep you in the loop I'll let you know what's going on. We'll get that interview. Also supposed to interview Richard Rawlings. Uh, we tried this week and it just didn't work out. Uh, so I'll keep you on the loop on that one. Richard Rawlings, Saudi auction, Cody we already got, and then uh, C10's in the park. That'll be up next. Again, thank you all who helped me get the truck done. And thank you all who helped me uh, essentially with parts for the truck. And uh, thank you guys, the audience, the C10 Nation, for... Uh, the cheers and uh, the praise and the support to get that thing out and running. And uh, I appreciate it. All right. That's way long for me on the intro. I'm out. Have a great week. Do what you do. Please check out the website, c10nation.com. Check out all the new stuff. Please leave us a review. Normally, I would want to read off some reviews here, but this is way too long already. So, you know what we say. Suck it, Solomon. Late. All right, guys. Sunday, the 15th, C10 Intervention. We're here. Got a nice breeze. It's like 85. We're in NorCal. Show is packed, jam-packed. First interview, and I walk outside of the park. I'm walking to the parking lot, and I see this little, this little cherry. So you see a for sale sign in it. The cool thing that's going to draw you in on this 1973 C10 square body is it's got what I would call... A tan and white two-tone, which you don't see that on a 73. I, I really haven't seen this color combo. Beautiful 73 grill. And uh, I talked to the owner who has it for sale, but uh, it's one of those, well, if it's for sale, but I wouldn't mind keeping it either, depending on what happens. So the new Jeff 70 BB for Big Block. So if you want to find him on Instagram, I will repost this truck for sure. And then what I'll do, because you guys always kind of want to have a visual, I'll do a little walk around and I'll put it on the uh, C10 Talk story. So Jeff, tell me about this truck. I've had this truck since December. Uh, bought it from the second owner. Um, done a few things to it. 
uh, I bought it to use it as a truck. That's why I left it stock the way it is. Um, I, well, I think we just drove it 80 miles to get here, cruising at 75 miles an hour. So um, it made it up here without a hiccup. It's an awesome truck, man. I just got too much stuff. You know? It's a good problem. <laughs> it's a real good problem, I guess, if you got space for it. So, but well, and, and you're a car guy, right? At heart, is that is that kind of what I'm picking up? Oh yeah, I, I've I've owned I've owned a few Blazers, two wheel drive, four wheel drive. Um, I'm just trying to slim them down, man. I got too much stuff, really. For so, why slim this one down? Um, because every time I turn around, uh, I want to put money into it. Like I literally, I stare at wheels, I stare at suspension, I stare at engine swaps, and uh, I'm trying to prevent myself from doing that. I got a huge project at the house with a ton of money into it already, and uh, I'm trying to avoid that. So I think the whole thing that we kind of came to a conclusion really on this truck as we talked before the mic went on was the struggle is real. And it's funny, when you look at this little cherry, it's unmolested, it's untouched, it's from 73, it's got a 1975 NRA sticker on it, a AAA sticker, tons of character, it's got a few gouges, which, you know, back in 84 would have drove you nuts, but in 2019, it's character. The problem is... For the audience, it, it's funny. What do you think? You know, we, we look at these trucks. Jeff's looking at this truck. He's thinking, do I put it on the ground? Do I give it the, like, you know, you and I were talking, the ride tech. Do I put a new LS in it, a 5.3, a 6.0? What are you going to do? I mean, is, is it where I can make enough scratch on it to subsidize a few other builds? Or do I sell another build and then start on... I'm going to call, what could, what could we call this? I don't know. Let's, we'll think of a name for it. Yeah. Do we put it into the 73? I'm thinking that if somebody would love to own this nice truck, it could be theirs. But if not, then uh, I might have to put some money into it come the new year um, and just, uh, you know, tinker around with it a little bit. But um, I don't want to have to do it. <laughs> but I will, man. It's just, uh, you know, I, I, it, this truck, I think for me, it's unique color, solid truck, no rust, uh, local Northern California truck. It would be awesome. Slammed on the ground, maybe a static drop with some, uh, with some twenties, nothing too crazy. So would you entertain just rolling it like this for quite a while and seeing what you get, you know, if you get any really good offers? I mean, I think I repost this. C10 Sales repost it. It's a Cali truck. I mean, you're going to sell it. You know, he's got it just for the audience. You've got He's got a 12.5, 73 uh, with a 350 uh, automatic. I, I think, you know, when we played the guessing game, that was probably right where I was. I was like 10 to 12. You know, I could see where a few little things you would do. Maybe you get all the way up to 14. So a guy comes in, he drops 10 on you. What are you saying? Uh, we'll have to talk. Call me in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See me at the end of the show. Yeah, maybe maybe tomorrow I wake up on the other side of the bed and I go, all right, the heck with it. Yeah. It's good to go. But, um, but, you know, I mean, like I said, man, it, I think it's a cool truck. Um, uh, if, if nobody buys it, then I'll end up spending a little bit, a, a little bit of money on it. But uh, but we'll we'll wait and see where it goes. You know, it's really cool. You know, for all of us out there, we're all the same. You know, we see it. You envision all the possibilities, what you could do. And the question is, if you did that, would you be happy? Would you think, oh, you know, it, it, I guess it comes down to kind of a business decision. You're saying, is there enough scratch in this that I can get out of it? Or do I sell something else? Or do I pull from savings and put it into this for the experience and the build? The good thing about this, Jeff, is you're a winner either way. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, I, uh, I, I think in the end, for me, um, I, if I put money into this, the goal is to not get upside down in it. If I'm not upside down and when I decide to sell it at a later date, yeah, I break even, I'm okay with that too. I got the, I got the experience to build a truck um, and I've never built a truck. So, yeah. um, you know, all my blazers were kind of a uh, little bit more simplistic. So I never built a truck. So if I have to, I'll do it. It's no big deal. At the end of the day, I'm glad you brought that up. Life is about those experiences. And sometimes those experiences, I think we put a monetary value on it, but you sometimes can't, you know, because you can't really determine at the end of the road, was that experience worth it? Was it not? Did I learn? And I think if you built this, now I don't know what style of builder you are. So you, you've you got vehicles, you've got cars. I think you said a Mustang, you've had a, a 70 Chevelle, you've got different cars and trucks and blazers along the way. It all depends on the style. And, and uh, I mean, take Orange Slice, for example. When you look at it, you know, I have this vision 
And there is something refreshing to say at the end of the day when it, when you unveil it and people are like, oh, you nailed it. You're like, oh, thank God. You're like, like I had a vision. And of course you want acceptance of first and foremost yourself, but then everybody and you take it to a show. That's why we love these shows. You show it off and people are like, damn, son, you killed it, Jeff. See, for me, uh, I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist. So I want to try to avoid the snowball. Like... I like I'm working on a Mustang Fastback right now and the amount of money I spent on AN fittings and braided hose to try to make it perfect that is where I'm trying to avoid that snowball in this but I think I think it could use a little static drop uh you know maybe some wheels and uh maybe even leave steelies with caps and just roll it the way it is but like I said it's for sale. It, I'm I'm here because it's for sale. I drove it here because I would like to see somebody take it and do some justice for the truck. But uh, if they don't, then I'll serve justice for the truck. He positioned himself in a great spot. You leave the show, you're walking right into it. Beautiful truck, rad guy. He's here. He's kind of having fun with it. And, uh, you know, it was funny to just kind of sit and talk to him about the truck and about some of that. Again, the struggle is real. I think you'll probably get an offer today. I really don't see you not. It might not be that full 12.5, but uh, either way, good luck and thanks for coming on the show, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Good seeing you. Have fun out there. There's a lot of trucks out there. Go check it out and get some get some ideas. Go see uh, Travis at Pro Performance. He would sell you a lot of stuff for this truck. You could you could really have a lot of fun. Open up that I pocketbook, bet. bro. I bet he he would break the bank on me. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Murdered out in the corner. You got a good spot, Matt. Matt, welcome to C10 Talk, my brother. We got uh, Square Stepper murdered out hanging out on the ground. Looking mean, looking lean, uh, no drip rail. Dude, this thing is, get, get, give what all you got. What, what do you got, man? Matt, welcome again. Hey, what's up, Ronnie? How you doing? Um, yeah, this thing was my dad's work truck. It was a 74 Cheyenne Super with a utility bed, three-quarter ton. He passed away in 09, and, you know, we always talked about what would happen after the truck when he retired, and this was my uh, idea of what I wanted to turn it into. So when he passed away, I took the truck. I completely tore it apart, bought another donor truck, and uh, put my dad's cab on that frame, and it went from there. I mean, this was all back in 2009, 2010. Got a full ride tech suspension, um, three inch body drop, and then uh, with the LSX or LS6 um, engine. But yeah, that's about it, man. So this thing saw a, a lot of work for dad. Three quarter ton work truck. My dad got this in 1973. Um, been in the family ever since. This will be my son's truck when uh, when I pass on. You know, he loves this thing. He's here running around. Everybody knows him. So it's a good family environment. Good to bring him up in, you know. What color was the truck originally? The truck was blue. The truck was originally blue. Um, like a Catalina blue or like a baby blue? More like a Catalina blue. It was just a, a really good blue, but uh, I kind of wanted to go away from it. And, uh, you know, we'd always talked about something like this, something real mean looking. And, uh, yeah. That's where she's at. Yeah, she uh, she looks mean, bro. She looks mean. Um, what a cool story. Uh, I mean, to, to repurpose, rebrand, rebuild this truck, your dad would be, uh, he'd, be he'd be stoked. I, I believe it. You know, every nut and bolt's been changed on this thing. It's going to last another 40, 50 years, you know. So I'm definitely so, excited. When you laid it out and you looked at it, you know, what were what were some of the things like? Were you were you certain on pretty much the whole design? Were you trying to figure out you know wheels? Were, are they IROC wheels? Okay. You know, in the Bay Area, IROCs are pretty big, pretty popular, but everybody has chrome IROCs, so I wanted to do something a little different. I powder coated them black, um, but everything on this truck's been done two or three times. I had no idea on how I wanted to do it. You know, I got it low. I did a five seven drop, and that wasn't low enough. So then I went with the full ride tech. Still wasn't low enough, and then that's when I did the three-inch body drop after everything. So that's cool because we all, I think, you know, struggle with that. You you kind of have a vision, and then over time, because sometimes builds either take a long time, they cost a lot of money, you change things up. I'm always just telling guys, just bring it out, bring it out, and and you'll get people that'll enjoy your your truck, your the fruits of your labor, and then you'll walk around and you'll get a new idea, and you're like, oh, maybe I should do that. And sometimes guys will say, oh, well, I'll just build a new truck then. But you obviously have meaning with this truck, tons of meaning that you'll – You'll just keep this truck, so you're like, I'll repurpose it, I'll re I'll rebrand it, and continue that transition. Exactly, exactly. And I what was the hardest part? 
I would say the hardest part was uh, doing the body drop after everything was done. If you look at the bed, I still got the full bed. Um, so I pretty much had the floorboard raised up three inches to achieve the body drop. And, uh, and you did all that yourself? No, there was a shop in Antioch, California called Scott Speed and Custom. They did all the work. Great shop, great owner. Um, and, uh, yeah, that guy, he did a, a, He was the only guy that would take the job on when I started. Nobody wanted to do the job because of how big it was because it was just a frame off. And uh, nobody was really doing trucks around here back then. He was the only guy. So this was 09, 2010, you said? Yeah, 2009, 2010. 90% of the work was done. Was it a stepper to begin with? I didn't know if you said that. No, it was uh, It was just a three-quarter ton utility, utility bed. bed, yeah. Oh, utility bed. Yeah. No, those are hot now. It, like, why do they keep that damn thing? Well, Ronnie, to tell you, to be honest, man, the last couple of years out of SEMA, I thought that exactly. I was like, man, I should have just kept it a long bed, slammed it, and just ran it like that. But uh, I couldn't, still couldn't be more happy with how it's come out. Cool. Now, why a stepper? Is that your thing? Steppers, I just always, you don't, you didn't never really see too many of them, or I didn't, you know, and... Uh, my dad and I really liked them. It's something that was different, you know. You always see the fleet sides, and it just gives it a little more meaner look, you know. It's just a little more aggression, I feel like. Yeah, it's like Mr. T's already mean enough, and then you put a step side on it. It makes it so much meaner. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard a guy named Dino. Um, he's kind of a big thing, and he has a truck like this called the Black Widow. Have you seen that or heard yes, about that yes, truck? Yes, I was just talking to Dino about maybe 45 minutes ago, and I've been following his build and just watching how that's progressed. Did you just say, why are you copying me, Dino? No, I did not. I was like, hey, man. I, time stamp it. I got a picture of you holding up the San Francisco Chronicle. Like, I built my shit in 09, 2010. Why you got to copy me? I was like, Dino, man, it looks like you got my truck in your shop. <laughs> but uh, that's a great guy, and uh, I love what he's doing with his. He just dropped a supercharger on that one. We need to get both of them at the same show, maybe at the get down, because it'd be pretty mean if you put these two trucks together. Yeah, so we were talking about it. Maybe not this get down, but 2020 yeah. is going to be, uh, I'll probably be out there since it's going to be a two-dayer. Cool. Do you have a name on this? No name for the truck. Everybody calls it Vader, you know, just because of how mean it looks. Um, but I haven't named it. It's just always been my dad's truck. That's how I refer to it. Let's take a look inside real quick. He's got a, what is it? It's a, is it L? S3 with the Corvette, or is it LS6? LS6. Got a LS6 jammed in there. Uh, Willwood uh, master cylinder. Got some beautiful looking headers. What headers are those? So those headers were actually built from uh, Scott Speed and Custom. Okay. Again, I did everything on this truck three times. I went from Sanderson headers, Headman headers. Um, and then once I got the LS motor, I didn't have anybody to have headers for that, so he just uh, he built them for me. And you can see how I did the, how he did the... So yeah, the 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 cab, one thing, and I'll take a picture of it. But he's raised the cab up three inches, like he said. So imagine walking into the opening the door, and on a square, you're gonna get a pretty plain where the uh, the weather stripping is. You're gonna step up, almost like a like a tri five truck. How when you open that, you're gonna step up. So on this, you're gonna step up, and then the fuel tank, which is under the seats, is. Um, also kind of raised as well. So he raised the whole thing. He's got the beautiful 74 you know, Cheyenne wood grain in here. And uh, you got a little bit more work to do in here, you, but you're going to wrap it up. You're going to go with black, uh, black, uh, like a loop. Yeah. So right now I'm with talking with DJ Designs, who did the uh, Mafia Trucks uh, interior. And we're working out something for next year. Always wanted like some black with black suede, you know, some red striping in there, something like that. But uh, hopefully by this time next year, she'll be done. Great taste, great ride, Vader, dad's build, um, you did a great job. Where can they where can they follow you on Instagram and see this? So my uh, Instagram is SSF underscore C-Tension, that's C-10-S-I-O-N, and I'm there all day. All right, good, dude. Appreciate it, and uh, rad build, and the coolest thing about this is the story. Appreciate your time, bro. Appreciate it, Ronnie. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. I'll tell you what, this is the damn son right here, Johnny Hobson. And uh, welcome to C10 Talk. Where are you out of? San Carlos, California. San Carlos. For my audience, if it's orange, it's it's gonna it's gonna pull me in. And this '71, he's got the trim. This is uh, this is a real deal. Johnny, thanks for bringing the truck out. Tell me about this build, man. It took a long time, about five years in the making. It's out of Petaluma, California. Dan Phillips out of Northwestern Fabrication. He's the man. He's the man of the build. We collaborated and built it together. 
Tell me about the vision and uh, we'll come over here and we'll look at this thing. Tell me about the vision and how the vision turned out compared to the five year process. You know, the struggle of five years for a build and what you think at the beginning, beginning and then what comes out of it at the end. It all came together, just all the new parts that come out during the build. You always have to take a couple steps backward and put the new jam on there, right? But yeah, we tried to keep it original as we could. Just keep it original. It never goes out of style. So what's one of the, like, you, uh, that's, you just nailed it, like the new jam, right? So what's something that you, you had on, you took off, something that you changed up? Because in five years, especially the last five years in the C10 community, the C10 nation, the C10 movement, a lot of shit changes. Yeah, the Accu Air game was going different. The Endo the tanks were changing, so that's where we changed those, put those on there, clean it all up. I mean, we just put on whatever we thought would look the cleanest most original like i said just try to keep it clean man i mean this thing is the lines the paint the trim uh what trim are you running marque marque yeah. trim that's the real deal right there he's got some uh hills tubs which are the, the, the nice thing about hills is they they look og and uh but they tub up now you got a small block with some built heads in there yeah, 383 stroker yeah 383 Willwood master cylinder. He's got a power booster. Is that a CPP power booster? Uh, that's CPP. Yeah, okay. So he's got the Willwood with the CPP power booster. The Hydro Boost, I should say. Small block, 383 built. He's got the uh, AFR heads. Oh, man, those headers. Who's running? What are those? Oh, shit. Stumped him. That's all right. That's all right. Got AC. Let's go in here. Of course, he's got the Houndstooth. Uh, bench seat. He's got the Atkin Sanderson. Okay, say so he had to think about it. I understand. I put him on. He's got uh, man, this color. Now is that is that what color did you go with? Just like a hugger. Hugger orange sixty nine Camaro. Billet specialties. Twenty fours and twenty twos in the front. Okay, this thing's coming together. OG Moon. Uh, Bedwood. Bedwood is Horky's. Horky's Bedwood. He's got the thing lifted up. He's got the tailgate looking perfect. And is that Porterbilt? What are you running? What, what? Okay, all Porterbilt. Chassis. Porterbilt chassis, AccuAir, and everything else is all all kind of custom. What, uh, you got a Mosier rear end? What fuel cell is that? Oh, that was Boyd. Okay, that's the tanks by Boyd. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you right, man, this thing's tucked. You are, you are, it's, it's killing it, man seen today with it so you're unveiling it today yeah this is the first time a little bit on instagram how's the response been it's been pretty good you're here what are people telling you they said it's gonna go far you know where's it go from here goes back home in the garage local car shows yeah, yeah. so you're gonna take it in you, you want to bring it out to phoenix what are you thinking am i getting invited yeah yeah you're get, get the, the get down is waiting for this yeah. thing man i want the people to see this thing Bring it out. Now, what do you do full-time? What's your what's your job? Electrician, San Francisco. Local six. Non-stop? Yeah, non-stop. This is Side Job Special right here. All right. Okay, Was that the name? What's the name? Side Job Special. This is It's a custom 10 Deluxe, but he's calling it the Side Job Special. The good thing about this truck is this, this, is, my, this is my kryptonite. It's a two-tone truck. He's got the trim. He's got the paint. Everything you did balances well. It's cool to see the vision at the end and, uh, and what you did. Um, I hope you get a lot of shine for this thing this weekend. Thanks a lot for your time, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, Johnny. So I'm going to hit up his Instagram. I didn't get that at the end. Go ahead with your Instagram. J-A-H underscore S-F. J-A-H underscore S-F. Yep. Johnny Hobson, the side, side job, job special. special. Side job special. All right. Thanks, Johnny. I just came up with that name. Freestyled it. It sounds good. Boom, boom, boom. I tell you what, this is like uh, Pimp Daddy Row. So we just got done talking to Johnny. And now we got Dave Herrera. Uh, Instagram is Herrera. Hold on with me here. Period underscore period co. Herrera period underscore period co. Um, this thing will stop you in your tracks. Tell us about your truck, brother. Well, started 13 years ago. Um, at 13 years ago? 13 years ago. I uh, wanted a, just a driver. Um, went from a simple paint job to a full-blown you know, frame off. You know, every, as as everybody knows in the in the build industry, you just don't drop it off and pick it up. It's a process. Um, my, Did you build it? Did you have some of the work outsourced? I, a lot of the work outsourced. Of course, the paint, interior, uh, engine work, but everything else, you know, in house. Um, 
American Custom Classics and Hollister helped me out with the most of the finishing touches. You know, wiring, um, windows, brakes, um, you name it. You know, they, they, they went from there. Um, it's a build that this passion, you know, always been in the trucks. Um, grant started from my grandfather, my father, my father in law, you know, and uh, here we are now with uh, a dirt, you know, a black truck that you try to cle keep clean and it's hard to, but yeah. Um, Why'd you pick this Jenna C10? Just back there, back in those days, uh, no one really had them, they were available. Um, like the body style, they're you know, they're not, it's just, it's just. My, like I said, my grandfather, my father had one, so we went from there. Uh, the wife, you know, kind of encouraged me, and she's always she's been behind me the hundred percent through the whole time. Uh, so let me get this straight: your wife encouraged you to build this truck? She doesn't say tell me no. You you need to stay married. This is a beautiful truck. Uh, this is a this is a timeless truck, and uh, for the audience, I'll post it up black, deep, deep black. Uh, you got some billets rolling on 20s, 20s, both front and rear. And then and then you got that red interior. So uh, well, if you think about a 13-year build, what's, the, I mean, is that just uh, uh, shops working on it, money's coming in? How many times did your vision change? And from what you ended up with here, what, if you could take us back to 10 years ago, 12 years ago, what, what were you thinking was going to happen then? Is this what you envisioned, this same exact build, or did it change quite a bit? For the the basic concept, lowered billets, uh, black, red interior is was my vision from the get go, and um, as time as time went on, you know, new products started coming out. I've changed a lot of stuff on the truck um, as the years went because there's new and improved stuff always coming out. Um, and but yeah, for pretty much the basic concept of the build was the way you see it here. Good, I think it's cool. Let's go over there and take a look at it. The interior, you guys, is just a beautiful beautiful red um you know black one piece windows looks like kind of a snowden seat uh, or some curvature to it tease but tease seats uh did the seat uh finish line interiors did the interior out of santa clara you got the act tray there you're running uh accurate you got billet specialty wheel uh with billet specialty wheels as well so we've got a wheel and steering wheel combo you've got some uh, dakota digital gauges You've got, uh, oh my God, this interior. The nice thing about this is so, so just the speakers you've got up in the kicks. The upholstery is amazing. And then you've got that leather dash pad. Who did the interior work? Uh, finish line, uh, out of Santa Clara. They did, uh, they recovered everything. Uh, Marquez Designs did the dash and the, um, the air conditioning unit in the middle. And then, um, like I said, T seats. It did a six speed T56 transmission in it. Um, now, up here, one of the things that he did is they shaved the drip rail, but they left just a scotch of it to give it a little of that, a little almost like a visor line there. And then they kept the body line to come around the back to the B post. So it curves right over the A, comes down and drops down to the B. Uh, no trim truck, left it all black, which is really tasteful. A bed floor, something you don't see that often anymore, non raised and left alone. A wider rear tub, so they wider, it looks like they widened a factory tub and, uh, and left it. So you've got, you know, the bed floor is all the way down. Let's come around here to the motor. Big block, big block. Yeah, big block, 396, um, stroked out. The Billard Specialties uh, front drive system on it. Are you and Johnny buddies? We met. Holy shit, because this yeah. is like, you got the Willwood Master Cylinder, you got the CPP Hydro Boost, so yeah, you've got, and you both are running strokers. He's running a 383 stroker, you're running a, a big block stroker. Yes, yes yeah, that's, correct. that's beautiful. Now, you stock inner tubs? Stock inner tubs, yes. I uh, went with um, Ring Brothers hinges, um, went with um, Veneta, Veneta Fab, yeah, was, yeah. yeah. Uh, did the, uh, the front balance on here. Pretty much about it. Uh, all black, all black, polished on front, on the top. I'll get some picks. Headers, Sanderson the same? Uh, they're Sanderson's, yes. Yeah, South San Francisco. Uh, you guys definitely have a good little formula going on between the two. These Ring Brother hood hinges are beautiful. Uh, I tell you what, you guys just really, uh, really uh, GSI billet handles. Very, very well done. Is this the first show you've had it at? Yes. No, actually, I did Brothers two years ago. Just I, I flew in, you know, went in real quick, came back out. You know, it was just a, t a taste of it, but uh, still had needed more work to done to be done to it. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much the, one of the first shows it's been to. 
How's the response been? Beautiful. Awesome. I mean, people are loving it. The compliments are amazing. Um, that's that's what what I'm here for. It's it's awesome. So tell my audience, you know, the struggle is real. 13 years. What what do you, you know, counsel us. 13 years. What just keep keep grinding, keep paying it, keep the vision going. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And that, don't stop. Um, it's a dream and um, it's it could be done. Um, just the the uh, compliments on, on on the truck itself is just uh, just amazing. It's um, we're, we're um, I'm blessed. Awesome. Good for you. And if your wife's behind you, that makes things better. Yeah. What What do you think about cruising this thing? Is this something you guys, you and Johnny guys, get, grab a couple of buddies and just get out on the you know PC one or I don't even know the Cali roads as well, but you just get out on something, and just let it rip up here. Yeah. Well, yesterday was the first time I actually drove it over 50 miles. Went for the run, uh, the C10 run yesterday. Um, the response was good. Um, a little nervous, but uh, overall, it was it was great. Oh, it's beautiful. Do you have a name for this truck, Dave? Precious. Precious. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah. You named it Precious before? Was was that before or after? How long has it been Precious? <laughs> uh, well, as soon as the, your wife started seeing the bike count come down a little bit. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, it is Precious. I think it's really cool that your wife's in on it. Everything's very tastefully done. You did a you did an excellent job, brother. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Be safe out there trucking. He's a truck driver, so he's probably going to listen to us yap. He said he's not much of a talker, but you did pretty good, dude. Thank you. Thanks, brother. All right, all right. Another one of these kryptonite ones for me, this orange. Don't mind Tony in the background. They're doing the awards. But uh, speaking of Tony's, 66 short. We got Tony, and uh, the cool thing about your truck, Tony, is uh, it's got enough Instagram following that uh, people sometimes don't put it all together that, that you're the guy behind the truck. So uh, 66 short. Tony, and where are you from? We live in Winters, California. Okay. Small. Family. How far is Winters from Auburn? So I'm probably about an hour and a half from here. North? Uh, south, towards San Francisco. Okay, cool. Now, um, you've got this truck. You're 66 short on Instagram. Tell us about this build and, and the process. So I bought this truck. It was just a, a rust bucket, basically, when I got it. It was a $500 truck back when 67 through 72 Chevy trucks.com was popular. Yeah. So we were on there just posting on that and it was supposed to be the $500 bucket that just kind of spiraled out of control. How does that happen? Uh, you start buying Porterbilt parts and uh, Empire Fabrication parts and Delmo stuff and it kind of gets out of hand. Putting it on the ground, giving it some air yep. and uh, one thing leads to another. How long has this build been? So my wife was eight months pregnant with my son when I bought it, and he just turned 13. So 13 years in the making. My Mesa Public School math, that's a long time. <laughs> yep, it adds up quick. That's kind of been the theme today. I've uh, just gotten some interviews with guys that it's been a long time. The I, you know, I hate for the audience to be repetitive, but what's the uh, explain how that happens from your vision 13, 14 years ago to the last six months? So, I mean, it's just time and money. You either have one or the other. I had, I'm working for the money and I didn't have time or I had the time and not enough money to do it. So, piecing it together piece by piece. Did you think that it would be uh, this, mo you know, this little mouse motor, this color? Did you change things? What was the biggest thing you changed? So, I started out, I, the big wheel phase, I had some big chrome bling bling wheels and my wife was, no, we're not having that. So, it kind of changed as we went. My son's a Giants fan, so it ended up being Giants orange. So, we went from there. And What color do you think you would have painted it? So, I wanted to do like, a, like the turquoise, the... Sea foam style, yeah. Okay. So my wife and son said no, and we went that route. <laughs> Are you happy with the orange? I mean, even though, yeah, I mean, it just draws everybody in. Yeah. So the painter, his name's Anthony Hermes. Uh, I told him I wanted a bright orange, and he went with it, and that's how it came out. So you said like San Francisco Giants, but do you know like is it a hugger orange or what so color is it? Started out as a hugger orange, and he just tinted the base from there. Did he go a little lighter? I'm not sure. I think it's over a white base coat, so it kind of popped a little more. Yeah, it does. It pops. I love the two-tone. A lot of balance, a lot of chrome, white walls. Was it a custom, or did you did you work really hard on finding all that trim? Oh, yeah. So that's uh, Marquet trim, and I just bought the trim and drilled the holes. So uh, D-Bomb, the interior guy down there, thank you to him. He sent me a template on where to drill the holes. So I laid it out on the truck. He did it on his, and I just... Marked it up and drilled them out. 
Perfect, man. That can be sketchy, I know, because I uh, just do an orange slice. I got the Marquee trim, and some because my truck was a long bed, and now you're making a short bed. Um, there's a few spots where there were holes when it was long, and now they're not there. So you're looking at it, and you're trying to balance the trim out. You're, I, I got a tape on it, I got a level on it, yeah. and you're like, okay, I'm gonna drill. And <laughs> and, and it, you think of a guy who. You, you already made it a short bed it wouldn't be that big of a deal but yeah. it is stressful because you want it to be in the right spot and then you've got a short bed that you want everything to line up and uh yeah, it, it can be stressful i got a little lucky my truck was still on primer when we drilled all the holes so made it a little easier well i i wouldn't even call it luck i'd say you're brilliant that's the way to do it if you lay know it. if you know lay it out and a lot of times like you said time and money you might not have the trim yet you're trying to you know sit back and save all your pennies for paint um, how about this small block? What do you got here? You got an Edelbrock into our, uh, carburetor and intake. Yep. So you've got, uh, is it 350? Is it board? What do you got? It's a stock 1967 283. Oh, it is a 283. Okay. So I bought this off of Craigslist for 700 bucks. The only reason I bought it was for that intake carbon air cleaner. The guy told me it ran. He said it's got a little lumpy cam in it. Put an oil pan gasket on it and it runs. So I did. Uh, never been rebuilt and I'm still driving it. So. Perfect, perfect. The uh, the Empire inner fenders, I think, I don't know again if these are Dells or Empires or Empire Dells. I think it's a collaboration between the two. Either way, yeah. it's a winning combination. Like so do you have a, is it a three, is it an automatic, what, is it a, is it a so 350? 700R4, so I got the overdrive. And that was the same thing, I bought it off Craigslist, rolled the dice, it ended up blowing up. I just had it rebuilt, and now it's running good. Cool. Interior looks just beautiful uh let's see here you got a uh, little uh, stock radio style gauges what are those gauges just factory gauges from a suburban i had and then uh i bought i think it was uh renee that sold me the tack so i got the tack from him very clean very clean custom trim all the way around uh you, you got the two-tone with the white all porter built suspension porter built suspension magnaflow exhaust so i got in Dixon, California. His name is uh, Jim Snow, RPM Motorsports. Did the exhaust, all stainless steel with MagnaFlow mufflers, all TIG welded. Very happy with that. What's the rear? Is like an old Suburban tank? What do you got back here? Yeah, just a Brothers Truck conversion tank. So, Got some, uh, your your air. You've got two different, uh, you got one for, what is this, one for horns, one for AccuAir. What's that tank back there? So basically, I started with a five-gallon tank, and it just wasn't enough volume. Once I lifted the truck up, it was already turning the compressors back on. So I just added two more tanks for more volume. Oh, see the other one here where we're standing underneath? So he's got two more tanks in the uh, right and left rear. He's got a VU4 uh, AccuAir, and uh, he's got the compressor. He's got uh, the full porter build back here. Now, you're running bigger lines. What's your thought on that? You want to dump quick? So the bigger lines are just going to the train horn, just so I'm getting more air to the horn. I see that now. Yeah. He's got the train horns that are a little bit covered, but he gave a little love earlier. So uh, everything is very, t is two-piece drive shaft? Two-piece drive shaft. I got that from Delmo. So once he was building his trucks, I just called and ordered one while he was doing that. So. It's beautiful, beautiful. What's the biggest, you know, hardest part? As far as building a truck, just uh, patience and doing it. Like time and life gets in the way, so just don't give up. Was it a big back window all, the whole time? No, you converted it? I got this uh, cabin doors from a 66 motorhome, so it was all rust free, but it was small back window. And uh, coveted, de coveted design in Vacaville actually converted it to a big back window. So. What's the response been? Response as far as the truck, everyone seems to love the color, it seems to pop, so everyone's liking it. What do you think about like when you post it and, and uh, you know, I, I've reposted it and all these guys repost it? It's it, and, it, and it's not getting 500 likes. It's getting two, three thousand likes. It's it's a popper. Yeah, I love the attention. So keep posting it. I love it. What's uh What's the name? Do you got a name on this thing? Uh, nope. <laughs> orange Dream, I guess. Something like that. 13 years in a dream or an, an orange dream. It's a beautiful truck, Tony. You guys could follow him. Check him out. 66 Short on Instagram and. Uh, do it because if he does a lot of reposting on Craigslist just for fun. Yep. And uh, you can also check out his beautiful truck, beautiful trim, setups on the wheels. Everything is put together really nice, very tastefully done. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Here we go. Just follow my lead. Okay. What up, what up? Man, they're uh, packing them in, pack it out, getting ready to roll out. So this gets to be a fun time for me. But, uh, you know, when this truck, I always tell my audience, I, I do this backstory. I saw you pull in, I was running around, I saw this truck, and I gave it the old damn son, and Tony was getting her all ready, cleaning her up, and I just said, dude, 
hold that thought. I will be back. And uh, I'm back. I'm glad that uh, you hadn't left yet. Tony Lorenzo, he's out of, guess it, Auburn, California. What a perfect place to uh, roll your hot rod C10 to a show. Tony, welcome to C10 Talk, and uh, what a beautiful truck you have, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. How's this thing? What's the, what's the story on this thing? You know, we bought it uh, on a walk one night off off the original owner and uh, told the kids we would fix it up and probably took it a little too far. But, um, you know, it's done, and my, it's a mine and my kids' project. I wonder if anybody ever says, just so you know, I'm coming up on five years, and I've never had a guy say, I should have taken it farther. Right? I mean, that's just who we are. So we have a 1968 C10 LSX, beautiful freaking Holly EFI turbo truck, uh, everything about this truck. How long did it take? And, and uh, you know, just tell us the process on it. Right. So um, started out as a step side, uh, turned it into a fleet side. Suspension's all porter built, coil over. Um, DJ Designs, Danny did the interior in the Bay Area, and Speed and Color did the paint. Everything else we did, me and my kids did all the assembly, all the fab work, all the framework, brakes, everything we did. Um, motors and LSX, uh, B15 motor, 76 millimeter turbo, air to air. You know, it's a 804 horsepower at the tires, uh, 15 pounds of boost. So she scoots? But not really, just smokes the tires, you know. So she, she get the hookup thing is something else you gotta work on, but right, she, so she's got a lot of horsepower. Got a lot of horsepower, we're gonna detune it a little bit change the training setup and um, just drive it so it's porter built with coilovers Coilover. okay now you you and your wife or you and your family are out on an evening walk you know life's good all of a sudden on the side of a house I can only imagine you see a little truck it's yeah. a 68 yeah. you're like damn yeah. I, I, I need to buy that right so I me and the kids went and knocked on the door and uh, you took your kids just in case just in case it got ornery well, we, were, <laughs> we were we were just out the kids were riding bikes and me and my wife were walking so we, we knocked on the door original owner truck his kids learned how to drive in it and he was more than happy to sell me the truck as long as i bought the trailer that went with it like a camping trailer no he had like a Datsun. i wish i would have kept it but it was like a 72 Datsun pickup trailer yeah and i said no problem you know we paid 1500 bucks for the combo and went home got the trailer and shut your home. mouth 1500 bucks for a 68 short bed yes Five years ago. Five years ago. was a gold bar. Yeah. So this is what it is now. And, and, and it's got a little more than 1,500 into it. Uh, he's, got, he's got what I would call is a, kind of a darker gray metallic. And we're sitting here with the sun. Uh, it's just beaming off of the paint. 68 front. Obviously, it is a 68. The grill. Chrome bumper. U.S. mags. Looks like 20-20 combo. Probably eight and a half in the front. 10 in the rear yep. something like that okay uh let's come over here tell us about this big orange beast in here so um it's a lsx you know 376 b15 gm crate motor um 76 millimeter turbonetics turbo uh you know holly accessory drive and holly fuel injection and air to air intercooler have you had it at ls fest or thought about taking it out there i actually was going to go out there with mark roman my tuner who has the jimmy right across the way there and uh i couldn't make it work with with uh with time this year but i will be there next year oh, bring this thing you'll have a good time so it looks like you've got uh, some aftermarket ac yep. what are you running resto mod air okay resto mod and then uh stock inner uh, fender wells stock inner fender wells yep Eddie Motorsport, what do we Eddie Motorsport. Okay, so hood hinges. You know, for the audience, I try to ask all that so you can hear what people are running. And, and uh, you know, if, if if the products suck, then you won't, you tend not to see them on, uh, you know, on trucks and on builds, especially from builders like yourself. So, obviously, the Eddies, we see those a lot. We see the, uh, the chopping block switch ones. Uh, we see the, now some Ring Brother ones. So, that's a, that's a big thing with the hood hinges. What brakes are you running? Okay, Will Woods up front. What size? Uh, 14 inch, six piston front, and 13 six piston in the rear. How about that trim? Who's making that for you? That trim was from uh, Marks. Mark A. Yep, Mark A. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're actually, uh, that's what I'm running on my truck, and they're the sponsor of the show. And I tell you, for the audience, again, I wouldn't put them on there if they weren't the best, and they're the best. This stuff is amazing. Interior, tastefully done. He's got the Pioneer deck in there. You got the AC seat. Looks wow, that leather looks beautiful. Who's who's doing that leather? So the the interior is done by uh, DJ Designs, Danny, uh, in South City. I actually think he moved to uh, Hayward now, but um, he did the full interior, did the stereo for me. You know, square weave carpet and diamond. And, and that's not like a pleather. That feels like the real deal. 
That actually is high end vinyl. Oh my god, that is some nice. You should have lied to me. That stuff is beautiful. Yeah, so that's the beautiful. Is, is that See, I could have went with the leather, but it doesn't hold up as well sitting in the sun. That's what I've heard. I've heard you have to do so much to take right, care so of it. And this this high end, you're going to pay almost as much for this as you would for the leather, but it holds up better. You know what I do? I agree with you. And it gets uh, unfortunately, I, I always want that smell though. Right, but, uh, but but we're both sticking our heads uh, in the truck, smelling at the same it, time. People are looking at us like, what the hell are they doing? The windows are up in the shop. It smell. It does smell good in there. Well, that's better than when the windows are up with I'm when I'm hanging out with my buddies. So it's it's very uh, it's very straight. Uh, who? I mean, how many hours are you looking in like paint and body? I'm blocking this thing. I mean, this thing is a straight ass truck. You know, I couldn't tell you that, that how much time we have in it. I mean, um, body and paint, I, I couldn't tell you. So I, now it's a family affair truck. Right. The kids worked on it. You worked on it. Yeah. You might take it to LS Fest if it's around next year. Right. Word on the street is this thing, you know, might might be for sale. It will be. Um, it, it is for sale, and me and the boys love projects. So this one's done, and it's running and driving down the road reliably, and I think we're ready to start another project. Cool. You need to, uh, you know, like I said, do you have a truck? Yeah. Let's say this. Do you have one in the waiting that you want? Do you have one you already bought? I have a couple, uh, a couple that are uh, in line, if I can make it work. Yeah. Okay. Tony from Lorenzo Customs. Now, now you do that with the kids, and then that's your full-time job too. No, I'm actually an electrical contractor by trade, and me and my brother build trucks on the side. So we also do F100. So there, my brother drives an F100 that is, you know, completely it's slammed LS, uh, but it's an F100. So I can't. It's kind of foobar around here, you know. Well, we like we. I, you you kind of said the magic words. It's the F100 with the LS. Ironically enough, right. is it uh, what year? Is it a bump side? Is it a dent side? It is a um, bump side. It's a '68. Yeah. It is a you know it's a six liter 4L80. Four link coil over. Um, if they borrow, if they borrow our power plant, then it's okay. You know, then you feel like it's adopted. You've you've got it. It's there. Really, uh, I just had a guy named Solomon on. He's a big Ford, so it was like Ford F100 versus C10 Talk. We give it hard times back and forth, but uh, old metal is old metal, and it's cool. You know, 40 years, 40 years, 50 years down the road for us. You know, we see that you're like that's still a cool old truck. Absolutely, I agree 100. As long as it's really, if it's American made and it's old. I'm all about it. Cool. I agree with you. Well, Tony, you did a great job. I think it's cool. Do you have a name for this thing? I, I really don't. I know you're supposed to have a name for your trucks. You don't have to. I just wondered, you know, being a five-year build with the kids, if you, you know, usually one of the kids will throw something out, and then you're like, you're like, okay, that's gonna. Oh, we we the kid, his son's here. He gave him a name, but but it, it might not have stuck. So we'll uh, we'll we'll take it off the air here and see if we can come up with a name, but. Tony, great job. Thanks for taking the time to tell us about your truck. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Boom, boom, boom. How about them 49ers, Bert? Damn, son. Hey, I wonder how Jimmy Garoppolo did because I got him in fantasy. Did he do good today? Like 41 points today, so it looked pretty really good. Oh, shit. All right. Go Bengals. Go 49ers. What a game. Taking it back to what, 89? Joe Montana? Yeah. Jim Taylor? Whatever. Remember those days? All right. Focus, focus. Here we go. What a rad little jewel this thing is. So I'm walking around and uh, you don't see this color combo. This is kind of a cool little uh, 68 cent, uh, you know, 50th year anniversary combo you did on this blazer. So he's got a little K5. Bert, he's from, I'm assuming, up here in the Bay Area because he's got a little San Francisco love. But then what he's got is he's got the 67, 68 because he's got no marker lights on a little blazer. So uh, Bert, welcome to C10 Talk. Uh, what is your Instagram? C10 Buck. Buck? Yeah, because I got a, I got a '64 short bed truck also, and previous owners used to call it Buck the truck, so I named it C10 Buck on my Instagram. Cool, C10 Buck, on Instagram. He's also got this little this little jewel. How this thing come about, brother? I got hooked on blazers. A lot of it from the guys that throwing this stuff, and uh, I bought this off of eBay sight unseen. It used to be canary yellow, out of Florida brought it in and I just had a vision to turn it into an anniversary gold truck. My rendition of it. It's pretty sweet, bro. Thanks. How long did it take? Probably all in all about five years. Tell us about it. What are you running? What do you got? It's got a 350 700R4 uh, air ride, the original air ride suspension. Uh, Switched over the, because the motherboard went out, so I switched it over to AccuAir. So you got like a VU4 with old school air ride, and then what are you using for valves though? That's what you switched over for the VU4. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so, but what are you using for like a controller? The oh, okay. So you've got the Accuware with the View 4, and then you've already had all your traders and everything. Okay. All right. The updated 99 Tahoe buckets and the Suburban back, the rear seat's removable. Uh, and then I just wanted to give it a classic look, you know, just updated though. What about this console? Where'd you, uh, that kind of looks like, uh, you little put you, you morphed it together with some other. Did you use some stock stuff and then kind of add to it, or did you build it? It's it's built by the interior guy. It's okay. Custom. So in the interior of this, uh, you know, K5, he's got kind of a console set up. The two cup holders down low, where you know a shifter would be. He's got a deck, a head unit. He's got his Accuware slopes down. I'll take a picture of it. He's got some nice kicks with some tweets, six by fives. Nothing cut in the door. Tastefully done. It looks like usually I see Dakotas, but I'm thinking those are classics. They look a little different. What gauges are those? Uh, I forgot the my mechanic guy recommended to me. He okay. asked me if I wanted Dakota. I was thinking Dakota, but then this looked a little bit more classic, so I wanted to go more classic. I think they might be classic industries. They, they either way they look good. Dakota does make a retro version, but I think those are classics. Now you got kind of a little uh, little soft top on here. What's that about? Yeah, that was a Father's Day gift for my wife. She asked me what I wanted. I said a soft top. She brought it. It's perfect. I mean, it keeps the sun out of you while you're driving. Yeah, it is cool because you still get the airflow, you still get the breeze, but you got some sun over your head, so uh, that's kind of nice. Well, how far do you have to go to get something like this? Where are you where are you residing at? I I live in San Francisco, so I just you are right there in the bay. Then all right, cool. What about these wheels? Those are those are really tasteful, done. American Racing. U.S. mags. Okay, so they're the mags, but they so they all make the same one. I think there's called the big slots on the U.S. mags, and then you put the uh, the old hubcaps on there. Yeah. Try to give that classic, you know, Chevy look. What's the hardest part about this thing? Taking, you know, over the course of the time you got it to the build and everything going through it. Probably uh, finding the right guys to do it. I don't, I don't do all the work, and it's it's harder and harder to find good guys to build the right stuff at a decent price. The way the industry's gone, it's gotten top dollar and it's kind of like out of control where a blue collar guy can't really have a nice ride. You know what I'm saying? Well, and you have to almost do some of it yourself and at least try and learn and have that adventure. Uh, but you're right, it's tough. And I imagine you seem like you are a guy that gets a vision like you said, you have a 64 as well, so you know the trucks. You had a vision. You wanted to go with the 68 kind of anniversary edition appeal or look to it. And uh, do you think that it turned out the way your vision was? I think it hit the nail on the head. I mean, I was very, I was very happy the way it came out. Now, your front plate says K5 Gold. Is that the name of it? Is that just, uh, you know, do you, do you have a name for it? I call it the Midas Touch. I, I, get, I get what you did there. <laughs> I see what you're laying down there. It's like, like those San Francisco 49ers. They're chasing that gold, man. Yeah. All right, you got the Midas touch. He's a 49er fan. What exhaust are you running on this thing? Uh, Borla. Okay. What is the suspension? Because it is low. Is there some chassis work done there? It's uh, just all early classic. Early classic, um, super low cross member and uh, trailing arms. And I think the front, it came, when I bought it, it had a Western chassis uh, drop spindles. Okay. So, yeah, old school Western chassis, Western, uh, and then early classic. That's old school, too. You know, that was back in the day. So, pretty rad. What do you think, uh, what's the response been when you take it to shows like this? What do people say? Oh, they love it. I mean, they, they think it's the perfect family car to have. Uh, do, you have do you have Ford? What do you, how many kids do you have? What's your family size? I got a little 8-year-old and I got a 30-year-old. <laughs> Get out of here. What the hell? You were like 16 and you got her pregnant or something? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Holy shit! Because you know, you look like you're about my age. There's no reason I, I, I shouldn't be having no 30 year old, but but uh, good. Oh damn, good for you. Okay, so you got an eight year old. I don't see I don't see the eight year old and the 30 year old. Well, maybe the 30 year old sits over there with you, and then you throw the eight year old, and you guys go cruising. 30 year olds in New York, living her life. The eight year old, I told him to come up separately because you know I don't I didn't think they were gonna be able to handle his son all day long. So uh, they decided to stay home today. Cool. Well, either way, you, Mama, and the little one go go cruising maybe every now and then. It's a good family truckster here. K5 Gold, the Midas Touch. Bert, thanks for uh, doing what you do. He's a dispatcher in the 911 system here in the San Francisco area and uh, also a C10 lover and a fanatic just like we all are. So thanks for coming out today, and thanks for taking time to be on C10 Talk. Thank you. Late. Later. All right, all right, we're tapering it off for the day. We're wrapping it up, and uh, what a great show. 
I'm glad that uh, Jeff didn't leave. We talked earlier and we're back and uh, we're going to get a full tour of Old Brown. Jeff, thanks for taking time to be on C10 Talk and thanks for building such a rad truck. Oh, anytime. This has been awesome. The, the, the whole C10 community has just been unreal. So welcoming and uh, just glad we made the trip down. It's been unreal. Well, let me be honest with you. They're pretty damn welcoming no matter what truck you have. But Absolutely. if you got a, but if you got a pimp truck like this, they, they, you might open a few more doors. So tell us about Old Brown. Uh, so this was uh, just a truck that I grew up riding in. It was my uncle since 1981. Uh, so, I mean, I always loved it. It was his baby when he bought it. And uh, and then about 14 years ago, he decided he would maybe let it go. So we bought it off him and it was our our second vehicle. You know, we towed the trailer around with it. We, you know, hauled the kids' bikes in it. Our kids grew up in this truck. So, uh, you know, it was, it had a special spot in our heart. and. Uh, we were doing a bunch of work. The truck was just sitting there. We were actually ready. I, I phoned my uncle and asked if he just wanted it back. But, you know, he said oh, he didn't really have time for it. And he said, oh, you had a buddy that would be interested. And I'm like, ah, no, nah, it's been in the family too long. So it sat around for a little bit longer. And then we actually gave it to my daughter for her 17th birthday. Started building it. A, a really good buddy of mine got involved. And he kind of was telling me to step it up a little bit. And it, it got overboard. So uh, she... Uh, we made a deal that we would build her something else and we would take the truck back and so we did just a little mini cooper s something good for a you know 17 year old girl to rip around in and and uh then we started building it for me and me and my wife sarah we uh you know we went to a couple shows and thought you know this is great meeting people traveling different places and uh so yeah we we hit it pretty hard after that and uh it's all built you know 99 percent of my shop besides final body work and paint and uh I had good help from a good buddy of mine, Dave Johnston. He, uh, you know, he was, he pushed me, he pushed me. He's been building trucks since he was like 14. So, you know, he was a huge inspiration, uh, helped with design and everything and uh, pushed me to step it up a little bit. It was just going to be a static drop truck, you know, nice truck, but he pushed me to go all out on it. And, uh, and my wife was 100% behind it. You know, she loved it. So... You know, we just kept going. I wanted to keep it fairly stock, you know, stock appearance, you know. I didn't want to shave anything or do anything crazy like that. And uh, it worked out good. I, I'm blown away by the response, you know. I, I mean, we built it for us. If other people like it, I mean, that's awesome, right? But, uh, no, we're just having a blast traveling around with it and uh, meeting people and going places. Yeah, and the rest is, I mean, you're here, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what does your uncle think? He loves it. He does. You know, I was worried because when I originally bought it off him, I was like, you know, it had rallies on it. And I'm like, you know, this thing would be nice with a, you know, upsized rally on it or something. And he was kind of like, well, what's wrong with what's on it? And so I'm like, oh, what's it going to be like when I completely change it? It was a full trim, two-tone truck. It was brown originally. And uh, so I was a little nervous. But when he saw it, I think, honestly, he loved that we were still loving it. He says it's his biggest regret selling it. But he's also super glad he did because you know we did something with it it didn't just rot away and, and this thing was rough when we started with it we we're in bc canada so it's this stuff doesn't get patinaed there it, it rots out you know so uh you know it, we brought it back and i'm glad we did we're having a blast i think he's glad we did too so and we're glad for sure oh, so it's a 80 it is, yeah. gmc now it was brown, but you said it was a brown two-tone. So was it a dark with a tan or dark no, with a light? it was actually a lighter brown. It was more of like a copper. When I got it, it had already been repainted. My uncle had kind of done a, a small rebuild on it in the 90s, and I think it was like a Nissan, more of a copper color uh, with a beige center full trim. And so when we did it, we knew it had to go brown, but my wife wasn't really on board with brown understandable right so we I kind of left it up to her I said well let's find something we're both happy with you know I found a bunch of different browns we wanted to go with just a factory color just for you know we knew we were gonna drive it so if it needs to be resprayed or if you know anything happens to it it's not a custom color that's gonna be hard to you know match or anything and uh, she saw a Tundra driving through town one day and she's like you gotta you gotta find this color I love it and I'm like well if you love it we're finding it right and when I saw it I was yeah I was like yeah that looks good I didn't actually think it it would pop like this at first it scared me a little bit because I'm like oh that might be a little flashier than I was going for but in the end I think it turned out all right oh, I, I agree with you for the audience it's uh we talked about it you see it on like the Venza the the Tundra 
it's a root beer brown, but it also depends on the time of day. And it uh, it's definitely got a metallic in it. Right now, Jeff and I are standing passenger side. If you look at the bed rail, it's, I mean, it's a stunner. It's got like a copper brown to it. And then if you glance over at the hood, because the hood's so damn flat, and then you look at the passenger side fender, it's more of just a brown brown. So you've got root beer brown, you've got badass brown, you've got tundra brown, you've got old brown, and it just depends on where you're sitting and the time of day, really. And uh, so, so was it always old brown, or did you create the paint and then make it old brown? No, no, that that was always old brown. That was so yeah. So that originated my buddy that actually helped me build this. Well, you know, with inspiration and stuff like that. He uh, he actually I think said it one day. He's like, oh, you take an old brown. And this was, this was years ago. This was when my, you know, we had just got the truck, you know, so that's 13, 14 years ago. And then my kids started calling it Old Brown. And when the kids grew up calling it Old Brown, we're like, you know, that when I repaint it, I didn't think we were going to do emblems. And, you know, I wasn't huge into Instagram, so I didn't think it would be a whole hashtag and stuff. But when they, were, they, they called it Old Brown, I'm like, we call it Old Brown. Everybody, my family called it Old Brown for years. So we're like, it's got to go brown. You know, and that's so, and that's why when we, you know, when she found this, she was happy with it. We're like, that's it. And then, you know, with Instagram, we're doing more of that. I'd start hashtagging it and stuff. And then um, we saw, well, we actually, we saw, I talked to um, uh, Billet Badges at SEMA when they were, Billet Badges were just starting to, to design Syndicate Series 2. So they're like, well, we're working on that script already. And I'm like, okay, I'll be in touch with you guys. So, and then we, we contacted them, worked back and forth, and uh, I think they knocked it out of the park. I love them. We got tons of attention. The best part is when I've had people say, I don't remember an old brown edition. And I'm like, that's perfect, right? You know, I mean, we didn't want it to be stand out different. You know, I wanted it built like that could have been a, you know, a GM brand, whatever you want to say, right? Like, 100%. You know, and, and, uh, that was kind of, when you think about Yellowstone, I had them make me, I only went with the dash emblem, but uh, you're kind of like, make it like GM would have done yeah. it. You know, like if they had a camper truck, if they would have had an old brown truck, you guys killed it. Interior, what kind of seat you're running here? Snowden, Snowden seat. Snowden okay. Dakota now, digital gauges. Dakota Digital, I, I've got the mic over here. So he's got AccuAir, you got yep. an tray. Uh, yeah, that, we built all that. It's got uh, Resto Mod Air. We just finished putting that on. I built it. Oh, really? Yeah, that stock to, it started to stock frame rails. We basically built everything, you know, cross members, the, the trailing arms, the, the wishbone suspension in the back. It's all modified factory in the front, you know, like a huge pancake cross member and everything like that. It, we, we built everything we could in my shop, you know. And so I just noticed something. I've never seen this before, but i never seen a, a – I didn't know GM put a hood, hood release latch <laughs> uh, where the, underneath the battery tray. So, so a lot of that was, I mean, it, I was going to swap it over to the older style where it didn't have a hood pop. And then we we, did, we had our own made deadline on this. We wanted to hit good guys in uh, Puyallup. We had been there one year before, and that was, was really what got, gave us the drive. We just loved the atmosphere, you know, meeting people and stuff. So we're like, we want to be here with the truck next year. So that was something, kind of an oversight. I didn't think about that. Then it came time, you know, I was painting everything, and I'm like, Okay, I gotta put this hood pop somewhere else. So that was another one. My buddy said he goes, just put it in the wheel well. I'm like, oh, that's a brilliant idea. Let's do it. So and it worked. I think you're onto something because I think having the speakers and everything over there, you got it there. It's clean. It's out of the way. You know, uh, pretty ingenious. Well, so and a lot of it was we we reworked the inner wheel wells because I still wanted you know inner fenders and stuff like that. And at that time, there's there's like pretty much no way to get it back into the cab. So it's like, well, we got to put it somewhere. Yeah. So it worked. It worked. It works great. Um, for how many years did this take? How many years have you been working on it? Uh, we started three years ago, but it sat for two. Didn't really do anything. And then last 10 months, really. It, you put the hammer down? Yeah, we. I was working, you know, we're... I was working full-time job. I'm doing about 50 hours a week on this after work. And, uh, you know, my wife was super supportive. I missed, like, almost every family function for 10 months, you know. But it, we both just wanted to have it done so bad to get into the scene, to just, you know, get out. Our kids are 17 and 18, so they've kind of moved on to, you know, my daughter's across Canada now, and, and my son, well, he's driving, so he's not home much. So we're like, well, we need something that we enjoy. You know, we used to do a lot of lake stuff with the family, and now they weren't there so it wasn't really 
we weren't into it as much as we were as a whole family. So, you know, we're like, we like this. We go with our friends, you know, we got some good buddies with, with trucks and cars. So we do, you know, and just meet. We meet people like uh, this, the whole, you know, social media and, and C10s and everything. Like, it's amazing the people you meet, like literally all over the world. It's unbelievable. It's great. It's it's really what it's all about. It's about getting together with a common bond that brings us here. And then next thing you know, you're sitting next to five, six different trucks. You're eating, you're partying, you're having a good time. And uh, it's really kind of like um, what life's all about is meeting people and, 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 and just the community and sharing the story. Some of it, the misery oh, yeah. of, of the build, you know, and then... It's funny as humans, we uh, we tend to forget the negative because now you're here just relishing in the positive, relishing in the people seeing it, relishing in just the enjoyment, being behind the wheel. She's happy, you're happy, everybody's happy. Ten months of freaking kicking ass, uh, but it's all worth it. Oh yeah, and I mean, and even this thing, like literally, we've had every longer trip we've gone on with this thing, we've almost always had an issue. You know, like little things, little. You know, this weekend I, I blew a serpentine belt off you know something popped off whatever and uh you, you forget about it you know you get through it all the good way always the bad like 10 times right struggles real people i'm telling you so if you're out there be motivated by jeff his wife uh find yourself a truck get back into the garage get out there and grind and make a show set a deadline one of the guys said today if you didn't have deadlines Nobody get anything done. And uh, obviously, think about Orange Slice. I worked my tail off trying to get it out here. But the response has made uh, some of those sleepless nights worth it. And I'm sure, Jeff, just for you, how has the response been out here today? Oh, it has been unbelievable. You know, I I never thought any of that I would get nearly the positive feedback, you know. And I never really thought of that when we were building it. We were building it just to get out there and do things but the the positive feedback from today was like over the top especially i mean getting c10 intervention pick and dino's pick i mean that's just that's over the top that's something i never even dreamed of i never even thought about it because i you know i don't know it, I, the build wasn't for awards and stuff like that you know and the, these events don't have you know even have to have them it's just icing on the cake, you know. It's unbelievable. Well, and it, yeah, it doesn't hurt. That's for sure. You know, it definitely. And when you get guys like Dino, I mean, who are royalty in the scene, and they're picking your build, uh, it is obviously a compliment. And you know, we're all builders too, so that's what's cool is because then you get uh, it, in life, whether it's a truck, whether it's a paper, whatever it is, when you get a little praise for something you did, you're like, that feels pretty good. All right. And and one of the. I think the biggest compliments or the biggest like um, I don't know how to say it but is people saying that this is inspiration for them doing their builds like I've had quite a few people I love your truck it's awesome it inspires me to build my truck and I'm like really that's unreal you know like I couldn't ask for more than that, that is, that's and that and that shows the genuineness of you uh, because you know you're like listen if I can help somebody else be motivated or I can help motivate somebody else to to get behind get out in the garage uh, it's powerful. And then really when people tell me about the pod and they're like, we just love it. You know, you, you, I listen to you, inspire me. Just keep the movement going. Just keep it, enjoy it. Because someday we're going to look back and be like, you remember that when we were doing that? And, you know, hopefully it doesn't go away anytime soon, but, but we know how life works. So congratulations, Jeff, your wife's over there. Congratulations to her. And, uh, for the, for the social media, give them your, it's Jeff. It's Jeff dot hints. H I N T Z. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Okay, and you can or or you can do a hashtag old brown, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff dot hints h i n t z insta wiener, uh, or you can uh, do a little hashtag on old brown. You can check out the build, 1980 square, beautiful truck, brother. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Freestyling, we got the three banditos, Tony, okay. Sack Mayor, dropped Lord Carlos, the promoter, the pimp, and then you know, El Presidente, John Father. You three guys have put this together, second year, and uh, you have to be extremely, you know, just proud of what you've done and what you've built. And again, we've said it, if you build it, they'll come. So I guess I'll, I would start here, but then that might not get to you guys. So I'm going to go to Tony. Tony, what do you think, man? Uh, yeah, that was a, it was a pretty epic day for us. I know we, we put a lot of work into this and a lot of planning. Um, you know, it's just always thinking about how we can improve the show. I and mean, we talk about it a lot. Um, 
I don't know. It's just, it's just, I'm pretty, pretty excited and pretty happy with the way today turned out. But I mean, really this whole week we were thinking about next year already. And that's a lot of stress because you're like, oh, what, what, what? it's all moving so fast and you're, you're trying to not want to miss out on, on enjoying associate. this. Rick from uh, Provost Motor just interrupted. He's a special guest on the show. He's zip tying Tony right now. What would you say was your biggest stressor going into? If I would have talked to you last night, what are you most stressed about? Uh, well, about one o'clock, one thirty, I was up stressing out about um, fitting everybody in here because we knew they were coming. And what was scary was just following the the uh, Instagram feed and looking at. Um, Everybody hashtag CT intervention. My shit's almost ready. I'm almost out the door. I'm like, oh god, nobody's not coming, and I was scared. I was like, you saying you were hoping some people would fail and not make no, it. No, I was hoping so you'd have more room. I was hoping that some people had to go to like a bar mitzvah or something and celebrate time with their family. And I, I think it was important too, you know. But we want to be their other family, and we were glad that all of our family members decided to show up, and we squeezed in a few extra family members into the show and that was amazing um you know when you roll in here and 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 you see the camaraderie that takes place it's amazing i mean we're, we're lucky to be in this this whole um we're lucky to be in this whole culture you know and that's what it is for us trucks are cool and all that but dude the people outshine that like last night i was watching these guys lurking around the party and we were all lurking hard and shots were flowing and people were eating and it was like, I, I was standing there and Todd Big Fish walks up and he goes, hey, what's up? Sitting high and we're talking. And then Jeremy comes up and he goes, hey, man, I want to meet that guy. I'm like, you know how creepy Jeremy is. I was going to pee on him or something. But anyways, we introduced him. He goes, man, I've been following you. I've been following you. Next thing you know, these guys are hugging it out, dude. And now he, Jeremy's going to Nebraska. He might even move. Who knows? <laughs> well, you're you're right. I mean, the I, I've, the trucks are cool and the people are yeah. cooler. And what you guys have brought together, and then like the parking lot last night. Oh my God, the parking lot was off the chains. That's what we wanted here. Is the whole family atmosphere. I wanted everyone to have a blast. I can't stress how much I just want a good time here. I love to fucking party. I love it. And if I could bring the party here, I'm down. Like I want to party hard. We partied hard we yesterday. Go. Yeah, wherever we go, we're a rolling party. And it was great last night. I mean, that's the compadres, the C10 compadres couldn't have been better, man. They, they, they want to cook for everybody. They want everybody like we want to feed every single person there. We want everyone to have drinks. That'll be our thing. We'll do that for everybody at the venue. And it was like a, I mean, it was, Todd said it best. It was like a high school kager yeah. last night. That's what he said. And it was, we had a blast. And there was there was more than one kager really you could have went at the bar that was a, the pre-show oh, yeah. and then at the hotel oh, yeah. the parking lot party at the hotel was probably i mean for me it was it was cool because it wasn't just eight dudes like you know for lst or some of these other ones it was it was everybody, everybody uh, almost to al almost to the point where you're like i have no idea where we're gonna park but this is the kager we need to be at and, and everybody cool. was there did anybody see one cop last night nothing Oh, they cruised through? They were looking for John. <laughs> That's like seven cops. They just happened to be part of the uh, oh, part of the show. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Off-duty cops? Off-duty cops came in, brought their blazers, brought their trucks. Yeah, they rolled oh, in, yeah, hey. and they loved it. They loved it. I mean, two or three different barbecues going on. It was uh, that Red Lion Inn, and they couldn't have been more, you know, great to us. I mean, they let us do, they run in the mill. Awesome. Great. Yeah, it was it was good. So somebody who's been in it so long, and these guys, you know, the NorCal guys, they bring they bring the LBC, so they get you involved. And what's your perspective on, you know, it's the movement to now know from the Forum days and the C10 King days and the Cali, and then you've got your own little NorCal thing. You know, it's it's a pretty cool thing that you're involved with to bring all this together and how you fit into the puzzle, John Oral. Uh, my, you know, I, I'm always willing to help all these guys. Obviously, you know, met Carlos going through one of the uh, eastbound and downs. We hit it off. He threw this little idea at me, and I just wanted to help him because by the end of that trip, after spending 3,000 miles with a dude, you're like, hey, this dude's all right. And obviously, he thought the same thing me, or so he told me. He felt sorry for you because the prom king broke down. Exactly. Prom queen, I should say, yeah. Exactly it. Where is that thing, by the way? Metal Ox! <laughs> That's my boy, Kyle. 
Anyways, um, you know, uh, it's good to see it grow in the directions that is. We have, I'll admit, some growing pains, you know, with getting so big. But little factions, little cliques, but they're all good. They all love to meet back at some place. You know what I'm saying? We've got guys obviously here from Reno, Canada. Uh, of, course, of course, the relationships that we've developed with, you know, Big Fish, Todd. I mean, just everyone, yourself, the big cat showing up. I mean... For this show to be in its second year and having guys that come out, obviously, you know, yourself, C10 Talk, you know, representing the C10 Nation, um, Big, F- Big Fish from Nebraska, uh, the guys up from um, the Great White North, they dr- drove their trucks, father and son duo, both drove their trucks out here. It's good to see that, and um, I, I I love being part of it. I'm glad. I'm glad, at, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's year two. <laughs> And we are looking forward to year three, but uh, we've got to sit back and enjoy it here. It's, it's, it's a great time. Yeah, take a break and uh, enjoy that break because you got 12 months to get it figured out. If you would guesstimate and you didn't have to cut it off at 450, obviously the venue can hold 450 to 500. And it's, I'll be honest with you, it's tight in here. There's a lot going on. What would you guesstimate you could have had if you had the capacity uh, or the max capacity? What would you say if you had a venue that could hold 2,000? What would it have been? What would you guesstimate? I would guess about 600. Easy. Yeah, because just as soon as we sold out, then that's when everybody comes out of the woodworks. Hey, I, I didn't know I was waiting. I didn't know if I was. Just all the way up until today. People asking to get tickets. We posted them up for people. They sold in like 10 minutes for everybody. I mean, everyone's trying to get in here. There's nothing up here. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. I mean, I. So round three, what's going to happen? Round three, we're moving to a bigger venue. Uh, we have a couple things. A um, couple things in the works. A couple things in the works. What? Yeah, so, so one's, one, one will hold a 1,000, and one will be pretty unlimited. So we're kind of in between two places. It'll be in Woodland. Um, we're excited. I mean, we're just going to get bigger. I mean, imagine a bigger party. That's all we're, we're looking for. A bigger party. Okay, so next year, three, you know, the third year for the C10 intervention, probably in Woodland, California, which I think you were saying is here about a half hour from here. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at so that. Same distance from Sacramento. Same distance from Sacramento. So it's close proximity to every direction, you know, right from the bay. Yes, yeah, right off of Iowa, I-5. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I, I hope you, you know and, and, you know, thank you for all that you did because really from, you know, I was running around like crazy, but... It seemed like there was really no hiccups. The vendors were happy. Uh, the spectators were happy. The, the show guys were loving it. The awards were killer. And, uh, you know, you got the PA system set up. Everybody was just around at the same time. People getting kind of the praise that they deserve for their trucks and getting the recognition, oh, yeah. especially out of the awards. Oh, yeah. So, really, the, the... Newcastle Garage. we got to give him a yeah. shout-out. Oh, yeah. Andrew. He does a great job. Andrew is the best. Yeah. Couldn't be happier to have him on our team. No, no. He's You we're, saw him. We're they're lucky. they're we're crazy. Lucky. We're surrounded yeah. Surrounded by some good people that, that really support us in ways that we can't we can't even explain. I mean, the things that we need to do, we can't do them all by ourselves. Andrew, Greg, you know, we got all these guys that are shorty speed shop. I mean, all these guys step up and you're like, Hey dude, we need to go yeah, our wives. My my wife, her sister, all her friends were pulling, you know, um uh raffle tickets last night all night. I mean, we went through so much stuff. Carlos's wife and him and, and all their friends doing all the crazy stuff that they're doing, you know, and, and bagging stuff and trying to get everything together. Having Provost Motorsports on board, one of the biggest additions we could have to this show. The guys, A+, plus, top-notch, home run, grand slam every time, every every way possible well and ho- when you say home it's it, it's emphasis on home with the run meaning this is their backyard you know th- these are their people yeah. yeah no this is this is our our area you're in our front yard yeah. we're here we're we're partying yeah. like. surrounding yourself with these good people i mean that's a cool thing so it works out and you get all these people you get all these people that are they're helping making it work and you guys you made it look easy uh definitely big team effort i mean with uh brothers as a title sponsor you know, just helping us get it off the ground floor. And then Provost, honestly, these guys kind of taught us to take it to the next level. You know what I'm saying? We weren't really thinking about a VIP line, that side of it. And this guy, 
this team here. They just take it to the next level, and our, and that's what brought our show to the next level. And then the trucks, the amazing trucks that came out, the caliber, this boom. I mean, amazing. SEMA builds here, which is which is awesome to have. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that makes the show. Bottom line is, third year, next year, think about it. Put it on your calendar. If you're looking for a cruise um, from Friday to Saturday and then Sunday the show, they're looking to host, you know, 600-plus, maybe even a little bit more. Think Woodland. They got the brothers, you know, title sponsor. Provost has got the food, the drink, the coffee. They've got it all Cigar there. Roller. Cigar roller, the entertainment. You've got the uh, Catalina wine mixer. Big Fish puts that together. A lot of cool awards. Check out Newcastle Garage. Great job, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, for Thanks Ronnie. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ronnie. All right, we out. Late, guys. Late. Hey, you made it. We made it. I made it. You made it. We're done. Go check out Grinder's video, C10 Intervention 2019, or just subscribe to his channel, Grinder TV. You're going to get a good visual on pretty much mm, an accompanying video episode for episode 149. Now, one of the groups or the notes that I just skipped over, and you'll see it in the video, is C10 Club Reno. We cruised over to Reno, then we cruised down to Gardnerville, and uh, Travis, CTP, and Jeremy, Colcart D10, they put on a little barbecue for us. Probably had about mm, 15 to 20 dudes, and uh, the next morning we cruised out, we went over the hill, and ended up from Gardnerville to South Lake Tahoe. From South Lake Tahoe, we went over to Auburn and met up with everybody and the C-10 crews. Good times, great people. I'm telling you guys, C-10 Club Reno, thank you guys, Jeremy, Travis, all that you did. Awesome. Go check that video out. Late.